In chapter 6 you learned some of the basics of adding color and working with color in Photoshop. Um, I want to show a few more details about that, things that I couldn't quite get into in the text. And um, so I'm going to show you how to um, sort of mimic the idea of hand coloring, uh, maybe what used to be hand coloring, on this black and white photograph. Um, I'm going to start by loading a selection, and this is getting a little bit ahead of chapter 6 in the text, but eventually you will learn to create paths. And so you can see I've created some paths here for her skin tones, which would basically be around her face and neck and her arms. And I loaded a channel called Skin Tones, which I'm going to command click to activate. Um, and I'm going to use that when I go to uh, modify the coloring of her skin tones. So that's something that's way beyond the scope of this screencast. Uh, it comes up a little later in the text, but I just wanted to share that before I got going here. I'm going to deselect that. The way that I would start, if I was going to add color to a, an, a grayscale image, um, I would start by warming the image. So I would actually do this right on the layer itself. Um, and so just to preserve all of my um, original pixels, I will save a copy of the background. And I'll just leave that hidden. Um, maybe I'll just name that original so that I know I have that. Now the background layer, I'm actually going to use my um, image adjustment for hue and saturation. And I'm just going to do a very mild um, colorize. I'm going to leave the hue way over into this sort of sepia tone, sort of warm brown tone. And I'll bring the saturation way, way, way down. I just sort of barely want to see that the image is warmed. I don't, I don't necessarily want to see uh, brown or golden color, too much of it anyways. Um, I am going to see a difference here. I can turn on my original layer and sort of do the before and after. You can definitely see there is color there, um, but it really just reads as a sort of more warmed up image. Um, now with the image a little warmer, when I go to apply some color, it's going to sort of sink into the image a little more nicely um, and easily. So now I will load my skin tone channel, which I've saved my alpha channel. So I'll add skin tones by clicking the color balance adjustment layer icon. Her pale skin tone would best be represented by um, some yellow and some magenta and some red. And you know, you don't want to go too far and it's definitely a fine balance. So I, I don't want to add too much but I also want to make sure that I'm not making her too red or too magenta or too yellow. Um, and I can always come back and modify this later. So um, these are the values that I'm going to start with. Um, and in my um, layers panel, you can see I can sort of hide and show this layer with the eyeball icon. Um, right now, the color looks like it's kind of pasty. It's a little bit too thick or opaque looking. But if I change my, um, my blending mode, I'm going to see a different effect. And the way that I like to work through these, because you never really know what you're going to get, um, with any selection tool active, on, and I've got that layer active, I'm going to press the shift key and the plus sign and notice that I'm basically going to be able to scroll through my blending modes. So I'll just shift plus, shift plus, shift plus until I see a blending mode that I feel sort of best um, portrays this person in her skin, in the skin tone that I want to see on her. Um, so I'm going to, I'll go through all of them kind of quickly just to showcase what the blending modes uh, will do. And it's, it's very difficult to predict which blending mode is going to work best uh, depending on what you're doing. Um, but I'm going to use, um, for this image anyways, I think I'll use either the multiply or the overlay uh, or the the uh, darken, one of those is probably going to be a good idea. So I'll, I'll go with multiply this time around. Um, with multiply blending mode um, in place, then I might change the opacity a little bit. So I can sort of tone this down a little. I don't necessarily, you know, I don't want it to look, you want it to look like it has been colorized, but you also don't want it to look overly done. Um, and again, you can hide and show that eyeball to, to see your, your work, see how things look. So that's one way of adding color. We warm up the palette and then maybe use color balance to shift the colors. 
Um, another thing that you can do is just add a new layer and um, use your paintbrush on the layer. So I'm going to go ahead and choose um, something in the sort of golden brownish range um, and I'm going to paint on some highlights in her hair. Now with my brush I'm definitely going to work in color mode. I'm going to work at a low opacity and, and also a low flow. I had actually set these already earlier. so. Um, and I'm not going to worry too much about how it looks initially, so I'm just going to kind of paint over this area, and I'll zoom in a little. We can just paint over where those highlights might naturally occur. And I've got a really thick brush. If I were doing this, um, I don't know if a way to say this, but if I were to really care about this a lot, <laughs> um, I would probably use a you know variety of brush sizes rather than just this one big fat brush. Uh, but since I want to make this somewhat quickly, um, now this looks a little, in my opinion, thick, heavy, and painted on. But I could take this layer and again scroll through my different um, possible blending modes and um, you know notice how the way that, that color appears changes. So here was my normal um, painted on, and here's here it is in darkened mode. Um, so again, my blending mode, um, in addition to possibly a reduced opacity, um, would be a nice way of adding something. This is a small change. I mean, it's a barely noticeable, um, maybe if you're not used to looking at this kind of thing, but um, it, definitely, it definitely is going to read as having more color in the image. Um, I would probably take the time to actually do her low lights as well. So I would put some dark brown in there for low lights if I were spending more time on this. Um, in the same manner, you might make another layer and paint some eye color and maybe some lips as well. So you could zoom way, way in. Always a good idea to zoom in um, more than you think you need to. And I still have my paintbrush in color mode with a low opacity and a low flow. So I'll just kind of do a quick little paint around her Iris is there, um, and that's going to be, again, too much. I mean, it's up to you. You might like it kind of scary bright like that, like she's got those fake contact lenses, but I would say maybe bring this down into color mode um, to soften that a little bit, maybe bring her opacity on those eyes down a bit too. So something like that, and now that I've already modified that, when I go and choose A color for her lips. I'm going to be a little more careful because now I'm not going to be changing the blending, the opacity or the blending mode much when I'm finished. Um, so something like that's probably again too heavy-handed. I could Command Z to undo that and modify what's going on up here before I, um, you know, give it another try. Um, again, I'm being a little sloppy, but this is just to showcase. Um, a way of working and not necessarily what the final result will always be. Um, all right, so a few different ways of thinking about adding color. Um, I think warming a black and white image is always a good idea and then working with selections and uh, color balance or adjustments or even filling a selection is one way to go. Working with the brush and then working with your layer blending modes and your opacities and also your brush mode um, is another way to uh, to think about working with um, color, modifying colors and adding colors in a Photoshop document.